everyone, my name is Disney Miss Lizzie and welcome to today's review of Doctor Who Rogue. We went all the way back to 1813. So how was the Bridgerton style-esque episode? Okay, so first of all, I loved this episode. I had such a good time watching it. It might be one of my favorites from this season so far. So what did I like about it and what I didn't really like about it? So let's start with the positives. So the start, we didn't have the usual, oh, okay, this is where we're going in the TARDIS and this is where, where, where we're landing. Oh, 1813, what a year, blah, blah, blah. We had that a little bit, but usually we come out of the TARDIS. So it was nice to just go straight into it and to find Doctor and Ruby dancing. And that was, that was a really cool scene to just start with there. They're Georgian dancing, they're Regency dancing. I thoroughly loved the classical music covers. I think it's quite a common thing in Bridgerton, bearing in mind I've never seen an episode of Bridgerton in my life, so I'm going on a hunch, but I think they do do um, classical music covers of pop music songs. And I loved that, and I thought the song choices were on point. So you had Bad Guy playing with the Doctor meeting Rogue for the first time, and then you had Poker Face with Ruby out doing the shapeshifter. I really liked that. I thought, oh, well done, well done. And the score at the end, Murray Gold's score when the Doctor puts on Rogue's ring. Absolutely brilliant, loved it, loved it, loved it. Well done. Also have to say, excellent sound design for this with the feathers and the shapeshifters creaking their necks and yes, Excellent. I loved it. Really thought the sound design was on point this week. Makeup, special effects makeup, I thought brilliant, fantastic, excellent. I loved how it looked like they had the life sucked out of them. Shrunken, wrinkled body lying on the floor. Excellent. Oh, I just had so much fun with this episode. So they're going to be like the little, little things that I loved. But let's go on to the bigger picture. Let's talk about the Doctor and Rogue. The Doctor experienced his first gay kiss on screen and how beautiful that scene was directed. Stunning and so intimate between these two men. I loved it and how they bounced off each other and though they may be opposites attract that the Doctor enjoyed the excitement of a bounty hunter but knew there were dangers that lurked with him. They still had this wonderful chemistry between the two. The scene where they danced, where they were there to cause a scandal and, you know, clutch your pearls and oh dear. It was beautiful and how the rest of the world just faded out and it was only them. It was just them in the room. As beautiful. I don't know if that was referencing Bridgerton, but it was very clever, very, very clever editing and directing. And I'd have to say that this is the Doctor's episode. It, The monsters were, that they were good and we will go into them a little bit further along, but this wasn't their episode. So for example, when you look at even the Family of Blood, and human nature. Although it's the Doctor understanding humanity and finding out what it means to be human, the family of blood own that episode as well as the Doctor. It's both of them together. But in this case, I would just say it's the Doctor's episode. It wasn't even necessarily Ruby's episode, though she was fantastic. I, I loved how she was talking to the Regency girl and her dance moves and introducing the word OK and Krishti and how she was teaching about um, modern 21st century women. Brilliant. How she comforted the Doctor as well when Rogue disappeared, which we'll go into a little bit more in a sec. But I thought that was very well done and it shows the relationship and the friendship that the Doctor shares with Ruby and it's just nice. It's so good. So, 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 so good. Even with all those things combined, you know, great directing, wonderful music choice, um, both diegetic and non-diegetic, this episode is very much about the Doctor and his emotions and that love, that love that he'll never, he can never fully have 
and it was portrayed and written and directed in such a tenderly intimate and romantic way it was lovely to to experience that side of the doctor and i loved his dancing to kylie they're very good and the dungeons and dragons reference as well it's like, oh D, D dice nice he's a D, D guy cool that ending with rogue falling with the shapeshifters I hope they bring him back. I don't want it to just be, oh, he's out there somewhere and he's just a one-off. I hope they do they do bring him back at some point and they can at least have proper closure, um, which I hope they do. I, I, I loved meeting Rogue. I wasn't too sure what was going to be of him, what his story was, but it surprised me. And it was a nice surprise as well because I just wasn't sure what was going to happen, whether it was going to be another uh, Madame du Pompadour scenario sort of thing but I know it was I I really liked his character I enjoyed him a lot I think he's very much one of those mysteries similar to River Song where you don't know enough about him I think that's what the Doctor enjoys about all these all these people that we've seen him become fairly intimate with they're just this mystery that he can't quite have at the moment and he enjoys exploring who they are. A little bit like Sherlock, going back to Sherlock and Irene Adler, a little bit like that, that there's a mystery to them. They can outdo him a lot, which I think he likes and he respects. So they did swap the roles over with Rogue saying, right, Doctor, run! It's like, wait a minute, I say that, I say that. And that's, yeah, I love that. Well done. So well done to the production team for that. And the CGI for the shapeshifters, wonderfully created. I loved how their eyes did the third eye blink that you see in owls and birds. I thought that was excellent, really well done. So one thing I did want to bring up about Rogue, the character, um, and let me know what you guys think in the comments about this, but do you think he was a replacement for Captain Jack in some way? Because he had a sense of being a time agent and there's a, there's still a lot of Jack's story that we have yet to uncover. Whether whether they'll be answered in either a, a Torchwood adaptation or whether Torchwood will come back, I don't know. His attire reminded me a lot of Captain Jack and I did wonder whether this was a replacement for John Barryman. Whether John Barryman will be invited back to Doctor Who, we will see. I'm, I'd be very surprised. Um, if he were to either be offered or to come back just because of um, what ha what's happened and everything that's happened during the past, what, three years, two, three years. But I just wondered, is he a replacement for Jack? Was Jack going to be involved in some point during this season if, say, for example, if Russell T Davis was planning on coming back way before the stuff with John Barrowman came out and then he had this idea for the Doctor to form a relationship with somebody that was close to Jack. But I just wondered if that was, if you thought the same thing as well, whether Rogue could be a time agent and could hold the answers to some of Jack's storylines. Because at some point it would be great to have those answers because there were so many things in Torchwood that were brilliant, brilliantly conceived. So if you've ever had the Torchwood Archives book and it explained about where the various Torchwood branches are. So you had um, a disused underground station, which I believe it collapsed in itself. You also had the Canary Wolf uptown, which was destroyed by the Daleks and the Cybermen. You had a branch, I think of either Nationwide or HSBC, where there was an old a uh, flat up there that was uh, manned by one person in a room full of boxes. You also had the Lost Torchwood as well, as well as Cardiff. So you had all these ingredients to make up such a rich universe, and it was a rich universe. So maybe there's more answers. Maybe he is connected to a time agent, or I'm just reading far too much into it, and I just would like some answers for Jack and his memory loss as well. That was never answered. He's, what, missing two years of his life? So maybe, but anyway, do you guys think the same thing? Please let me know in the comments because I would be incredibly interested to find out your opinions and thoughts on that. Okay, the regeneration thing. When I was looking up pictures for Rogue, I, that was the first thing that came up as saying, oh, Rogue has just broken the regeneration thing. So what's, what, what's happened, what's happened? And then I went to watch the episode and said, oh, okay, so 
Richard E. Grant has now been placed in the regeneration cycle and he was the original Ninth Doctor before Christopher Eccleston took on the official title. Richard E. Grant held that title in a animated series, which Russell T. Davis was not very complimentary about. He was also in a comic relief special. He played the Doctor. So now he's been added to the regeneration cycle. So next question and next theory and stuff. Where does this lead the regeneration cycle? Is it a regeneration cycle that's in this universe or is it a regeneration cycle that's in a different universe? Um, I also read that this could be where the toy maker has manipulated the universe around the Doctor's history. I made a jigsaw out of your history. Did you like it? Initial thoughts are... I don't know. I'm atrocious with theories and they usually tend to be completely and utterly wrong when I try and sit down and theorise. It's only when I can't be bothered to think that they turn out to be a little bit closer to getting it right. Do I think it's an alternate universe? Do I think it's the toy maker or do I think it was a one-off reference? Hmm. So if he's the ninth doctor and we already have nine, so nine hasn't been pushed out the way, that would be terrible mistake especially with the relationship between Christopher Eccleston and Russell T Davis I, that's just going to pour salt into the wound and there would be no way that we would ever get Christopher Eccleston back even more so if that were the case but if Richard E Grant has now joined the timeline what do we do with that hmm time for a Disney mug thought I like the idea that it could be the toy maker altering the Doctor's history and manipulating the universe around him. I do like that idea and that concept, particularly when it was built up before the giggle that the, that the toy maker was going to be the Doctor's biggest enemy, strongest enemy, his most powerful enemy. And he came, bef he comes from the same place as the Time Lords. So, is this more evidence of the giggle? In which case, Neil Patrick Harris has to come back. He has to come back. There's too, there's, he's too much of a character now not to escape from units. And I'm sure he will make a deal with somebody. And that will be the, oh, okay. He'll trick them. He'll do something. Because this is all building up around him now. Whether it will be Neil Patrick Harris or it'll be somebody else who will take that role on. If he comes from the same place as the Time Lords, then would he also have regenerative or regenerative power? So that could be something. Who knows? Who knows? So, so far, very positive experience. Very, very positive. Loved Rogue. Any negatives? Um, as I said earlier, I would say the shapeshifters weren't a weren't a villain family that I liked them I enjoyed them I wouldn't say that they were at the top end of Doctor Who villains however they only played a minor part in the story as in it it's not like a Doctor Who Dalek story it's not uh, the family of blood or anything as I mentioned earlier this is the Doctor's story and I think they would just play they were just there for more convenience of how to get rogue there and why rogue was there not every villain can be there to explode and make grand gestures um they they did their part very well they brought the rogue and the doctor together exceedingly well it doesn't matter that they ne not necessarily made a massive impact because it was still an extremely strong storyline and it had all the ingredients that made it a unique story for the Doctor as well. Yeah, I, th I think that's just the only negative that I can think of. Okay, so the next episode is about Ruby and the possibility of this twist woman's identity being revealed, which I'm, I'm, I'm eager to find out. I don't have any strong theories about who she could be. Um, other than she's possibly connected to the Doctor's past, she might be connected to the Timeless Children. I don't think she's the woman under the cloak, 
but I will find out because I'm going to watch it right now and then I'll start editing this video but I want to get that episode done and out the way so at least I've seen it and I'm all caught up so thank you so much for joining me please leave a comment leave a like and a share and subscribe to the channel and for more Disney and Doctor Who content please follow me on Instagram and TikTok where there will be more videos coming up in the future I'm so sorry I've been lagging behind on those it's just puppy sitting and just various other things have all have all been catching up but there are definitely more quotes coming and there are going to be some new quizzes on the way as well. I just need to sit down and film those and edit those and upload them. So anyway, thank you so much again. Have an awesome day. I'm going to go and watch the next episode of Doctor Who. And yeah, again, very excited to find out who is this twist woman. So I will see you next time. Bye guys. Bye.